try recording this again. So go ahead and write down that definition. It's the italics. It's on the in the left column on page 70. All right. So go ahead and write that down. Because somebody could pull the door shut in the back. That would be great. Everybody got that written down? Yep. All right, I'm going to add one more, uh, one more bit of information to that. And it's um, kind of on another page, but and I'm kind of doing my own words. I'm, we're, in addition to that, some added information is that a line can be real or implied. Now that might be something you don't quite understand. So let's elaborate a little bit. If I do a little point like this and I move it through space, you know I'm drawing what you'd say what? A line, and it'd be an imaginary line because it's not a real line. It's not one you can see, right? So you can understand that. Now, look on in your book on page 71. Look at the very bottom. Look at the flowers there. All right, they are the same flowers, right? Now, in terms of lines... Um, the one on which one hat is drawn totally with lines? The one on the right. Okay, so that that is created with real lines. Now on the other one, which is a photograph, how how what where are line? You know what what defines the edge? Here, line is using real lines are using to define the edge of the flower. But here on the photograph, what what are they using? Are there lines on that um, petal? No. no. But we know that, that, that if we were to draw this, we could show this shape by the implied lines. So that's what we mean by implied lines. There aren't really lines there, but you can, there, there's an impl it's implied because a line generally defines the edge of something. All right, so that's what we mean when it's an implied line. So I just I want to add that because sometimes I'll be talking about lines and you'll say I don't see any lines, but I'm talking about the implied lines. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is talk about a dimension. Talk to your partners and tell them what you think a dimension is. Okay. Did anybody come up with a good definition? Because everybody's heard of dimension. Everybody knows that word, but I found people don't necessarily understand it. And they know 2D and 3D, the fifth dimension, but they don't really know exactly how to define it. Anybody come up with a good definition? Yes? Um, the area of space that an object fills. The area, okay, that's... So, how many dimensions does a line have? One. What would that dimension be? The first dimension or flat? Not flat. All right. What about this piece of paper? How many dimensions? <coughs> Two, three. Two. Okay. Because what? What are the two dimensions? 
okay? Width and height, their length and width, sometimes those words get a little interchanged, okay? So it goes this way in space, right? And it goes this way in space. All right, what about, I want a box. Let's take the book, closest thing to a box. How many, how many dimensions? Three. Okay, so it, so it goes this way in space, right? It goes this way in space. What's the third way? It goes this way. All right. So just to make sure, we'll be talk. We'll be talking about those. At, um, but and you notice too, it also t uh, is the de a definition in the book. So some of you seem to know it. I'm not sure everybody does. So let's write down the definition so we're all on the same page. So definition of dimension, which is again on page seventy. Um, it's the amount of space an object takes up in one dimension. One dimension in a dimension? I don't know. In one direction, yes. Okay. I, I wrote the wrong notes today. Ha! Huh, nobody called me on it. I'm glad you got me. That's not right. Because those are the notes I wrote this morning, and I wrote them wrong. Okay. The other thing is, watch your spelling. One of the words I see constantly misspelled is definition and dimension. So make sure your spelling is correct. Now, if I was testing you and you had to write the word dimension or definition, I would not count it wrong because I'm not, I'm not testing you in spelling. So why, though, do you have to spell it right when you're writing your notes in your book? Because you learned. What? Because that's what you learned. From. That's, and it's called craftsmanship. How do you spell it correctly when you're already given the notes? You're careful and you pay attention, all right? So if you're paying attention when you take your notes or if you're writing out of your book, all I'm asking you to do, I'm not asking you to learn how to spell, I am learning you, I'm asking you to learn how to copy things correctly and that's part of paying attention to detail. That's, that's part of, if you think about it, why is that important? If you're a business and you put up a sign on the road and you misspell the words, that's not going to be good for business, right? Okay, so now we know what a line is. We know the definition of de de dimension. Let's talk about, because that's going to keep, that's going to um, differentiate one <coughs> element from the other. And so a line has how many dimensions? Yes. All right, and what do we call that dimension? Generally speaking, there's always exceptions. It's the first dimension, and when you're measuring a line, yes. Okay, good. You, these are things you already know, but it's good to, to, to go back and visit them and make sure you already know them. So a line has one dimension. And that dimension is, I'm just going to do a equal, equal sign, length. Okay, so now we are going to do a competition. All right, real quickly, um, anywhere you have space, I'm going to break, break up for a minute the note taking. And I want you to make as many different lines as you can possibly make. Okay, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. I'm just going to go quickly. And if somebody gets right, ooh, ooh. Gonna hide these, don't look, don't look, don't look. You're all looking, aren't you? Yeah. Ah! Okay, make as many different lines as you can. We're gonna have a blue team. We're gonna have a green team. And a black team, how did you know? Just brilliant. You're just brilliant, right? Just naturally genius. Okay. we got to have a few of those in here. 
Help me along. All right, so we got blue, green, or oh, black. Okay, the first row is going to be, what, what do you guys want to be? Black. All right. Black team. I'm going to give you some markers. Keep making those lines. What? What? Okay, this side is going to be blue. This side is going to be green. You guys are going to work together, okay? So what you're going to do is... Um, Any way of making this go away without turning it off. <clears throat> yeah, I'm brilliant. Okay, so what we're, uh, the rules of the game are you come up, one of your team members comes up, makes a line, the next one comes up, makes a different line, different line, different line, different line, different line. You may not repeat the lines that somebody else makes from any other team. So we're going to see how many lines we can make. The team that gets the most, that can keep making the most different kinds of lines wins. Okay, so we'll start with, we're going to do it quickly, blue. Blue team, come up and make, make a mark. Somebody with a blue marker, go. All right, followed rapidly by somebody on the green team. Somebody from the green team. Followed very rapidly by somebody on the black team. There you got somebody going. Okay, blue team, are you ready for your next, next uh, line? Okay, good. Green team, go. Green team. Go. Black team ready to go. We need another green one. Good, you gotta move, move, move. Now blue team. Green team. Black team. Whoops, we got two other black team. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay, blue team's next. Okay, black team. Alright, blue, green, and black. Come do another one. Okay, blue, green, and black again. I don't know. Give everybody a chance. What do you need? Can't think of one? Just make a random spiggle or something. Alright, good. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going next. What? That was horrible. I did not trust that. Oh. Can I have the All right, you guys are all too brilliant. You, can, you just have so many ideas. I have a feeling if we keep doing this, it'll go on. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. This will go on forever and ever and ever. Oh. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, no put down here. Okay. So, how many different kinds of lines do you think there are? Millions. Infinite. Infinite is correct. All right. But we can take all of these lines and and categorize them into five basic categories. Anybody want to guess what some of those categories might be? Straight, okay, and there's three categories of straight lines. Horizontals one, vertical's another, diagonals another one, zigzags another one. Curvy. Okay, you guys got all of them, you're brilliant. All right, so if you turn on, and yet if you turn in your page, so we're going to put that in our notes. Okay, if you turn on your pit, some of you, how many of you looked in your book? Anybody? Good for you if you did. Oh. All right, that's, that's a good thing. 
I don't have to be the giver of knowledge. You guys can, can you put the screen down? Um, no, that's screen. Oh. Mm -hmm. That makes the message a little confusing, doesn't it? Uh, sorry about that. All right, so let's turn that one light out. I think you'll be able to see better. Okay, and on your pit, uh, in your book, there it is. There's the information. You can find it yourself. All right, so the five basic kinds of lines. And they are, you already said, so we're going to have little, five little things coming off of here. Three, four, five. One was vertical, I believe someone said. I've been misspelling this word all day, and I'm a good speller, but not today. C-A-L, you can't see. Can't we? Is that better? Uh, I'm sorry, my screen looks very different than... No, no. There we go. Is that okay? Fine. You guys fixed it. Thank you. Okay, vertical, horizontal. What was the other ones? What was the other straight one? Diagonal. Um, zigzag. All right, so these are symbols, and they have meaning. What do they communicate? So um, Ms. Bailey and I have been working very hard today to come up with some examples in art where um, they have mostly vertical, mostly horizontal, mostly diagonal, mostly signal, bleh, zigzag, and mostly curved. It wasn't easy to find because usually you have a combination of of ones, but here's one image we came up with. Okay, now it's going to communicate in a lot of different ways. Part of the communication is that there's some things missing here, like her head. So, um, but in terms of line, what kind of mood, and remember we were talking about mood now, see now I have to lighten it up because um, shoot. That's probably as good as it's going to get. And I wish I could make it better, but I'm just not very good with the... Oh, and the, the lamp lights aren't on either. I don't mess it up quite fast. Oh. Can you guys take notes with the lights off? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so there's mostly you got these horizontal lines. She's holding something with horizontal lines. You have a the the um, the horizon uh, line. Thank <laughs> I couldn't think of the word there. Um, this is not horizontal, but it's you know it's kind of it's more horizontal than it is vertical. You get horizontal line or here. Okay, so what might you describe? What are some moods, feelings? How does this feel? Is it serious um, or solemn or kind of lively and what you call it boring it could be boring okay and these aren't absolutes tell the person sitting next to you what you some words because of the lines what does it feel like <laughs> okay. Mood words? Lonely. Lonely. Why did you say lonely? What about the lines makes it feel lonely? Okay, I think I I think you are reading it correctly. But I think you're more reading the fact that it's just this one person all by themselves. And so, yes, it is lonely, but I'm not sure the lines are creating that mood necessarily. 
They could be contributing to it, but what else? Is it quiet or noisy? Okay. Is it um, calm or exciting? Hmm. Very calm. Yes. What? Ah! Thank you. You guys are supposed to correct me every time I make a mistake because I make lots of them, okay? Teaching goes both ways. Thank you. So if you guys did that, either cross those out or you can cross out vertical and put horizontal and vice versa. That's what I'm going to do for now. Thank you. All right, what else? Um, does it look like it does it look like um, there's a lot of violence and, and warring going on here? Is it peaceful? Is it peaceful. what? Peaceful? Okay. So those are some um, examples and it's your when you look at this image, if I tell you to talk about the mood, you're also going to be, be responding to the images. You have a figure here. Um, you're going to be responding to the colors and that kind of thing. But right now, we were trying hard, and it was not easy to find images that just were limited to, to a, a, a horizontal line. Okay? So those are some of the, so those are just a few of the many words you can use. All right, let me get back on track here. So what about a vertical? And I think what we chose for a vertical is this one right here. Because a lot of people don't think about art as being a building, but what we have here, okay, is what? We have architecture here, which is art, okay? Well, but it could be a vertical line and it may not be tall, but what kind of feeling does that have? have. And it's going to have some of the similar because they're both straight lines. One, you know, there's a horizontal and there's a vertical. But when you have really tall buildings going on there, um, is it, um, how does it keep, pardon? It's calm, okay. And what about it is calm? The clouds, okay. 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 And again, we just want to, we're just talking about the vertic verticality. Um, is it serious or is it fun? Serious. Serious. Yeah, because I'm going to show you, let me show you another building. I hope this shows up. Okay. That's made all out of curved lines. Okay. So that's going to co communicate a very, a different kind of, um, feeling. So, serious? Yes. Do you remember a couple days ago when I walked up to you and I am a vertical line. How, how, how do you feel? Uh, a little awkward. What else? Intimidated. Intimidated, okay. All right, so a vertical line is going to convey power. All right, something powerful. Think about uh, flags on a flagpole, okay? That's about power, okay, when you have really tall things. So how does this, how does this convey power? And why? Why did they use that kind of architecture? What kind of building do you think this is? Yeah, what's going on in that skyscraper? Is that home to many people in the city? Huh? Yeah, probably work, probably owned by a big corporation. Okay? And so those buildings do, there's practical reasons for having buildings. They don't have space in the cities and all that. But it also, when you see a great big tall building, it's powerful. You think about the Sears Tower. Okay, it's not the Sears, the Sears Tower anymore. What is it in Chicago? Willis. Yes. Okay, the Willis Tower. Um, and again, why did it get renamed? Okay, because of who's in power. So there's connections there. All right, what else? Intimidating. Um, 
now, which is power. It's balanced good. Doesn't seem like it's going to fall over, right? So it's it's balanced. It's um, stable. Another thing is it's you know, who do you think? What do people what do people wear when they go in this building? Suits, right? Okay. So, and what, when do you wear suits? What kind of occasion? A formal occasion, okay? So it's going to be a formal kind of thing that you're conveying. All right, let's look at another building that's diagonal. Can any of you think of one that's diagonal? Yeah, you got it right off. Because we were we were scratching our heads and going, what the heck? All right. So now if you took this leaning tower and you put it upright, how would that change? I gotta change the ground line here. How would that change the meaning? Okay, pretend like it's straight up and down. It's just like a skyscraper, right? It's pretty boring. Do you think people would go there from miles around to see this building? No. No. Did they build it this way initially? Anybody know? No. no. It sunk in because the ground was too small. Okay, it sunk in. And so how is this different than the skyscraper? It's interesting, okay. It's more interesting. Unstable, Unstable. good. Interesting. Stereo. Unstable. All right. What? Appealing. Um, it's appealing to you, but you have to kind of say what is appealing about it. Okay, it's um it's creating would anybody be afraid to go up in there? And if they would, why would they be afraid? Dangerous. Yeah, it might fall over. It might move, right? Okay, so when you have a diagonal line, if I become a di diagonal line, it's because I'm moving. Okay, so diagonal line is going to communicate movement. It's going to be more lively. Because if I, you know, if you stand like straight up and down or if you lay, you're not moving, okay? The minute you start moving, you become a diagonal. So those are, those are some things that it that communicates. Now, what about zigzag? And that one was really a head scratcher. We could not, we could find zigzags in a lot of images, but we could not find, did we get anything printed out? Did we get there? Ms. Bailey? Yes. I know we printed one. Where, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, the fingernail one. Oh, where did I put it? I buried it. Oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So, we came up with this one. All right. So, if you paint um, zigzags on your fingernails, what are you communicating about your personality? You're fun, okay. What else? Okay, could be happy. Yeah, active would be a good one because when you think about, um, you know, if I'm doing this and this, if I'm if I'm if I'm going in a zigzag, I'm going to be very active. Okay, if you're a football player. Okay, I'm not a football player, but you get it? Okay, what else? Energy. You have a lot of energy. Good. Maybe a little local. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. That's how I tend to think. That's how my brain works. I'm a zigzag like this. And so um, it could be a little crazy when you go in different directions all the time like this. Some people think like this, they're very linear. I'm very non-linear in my thinking. I think of this, and that makes me think of that. Oh, and the next thing where people go, what the heck are you talking about? All right, so what about curved? And oh, okay, we want to go back. This is a little dark, and I apologize for that. But this is a building is creative okay it is a creative building but what kind of 
feeling, yeah, very creative because we don't normally see buildings like this. He's a very famous architect named Frank Gehry. And um, what, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's curved creative. In the sense of using it in a building, in that context, yes, it would be creative because mostly we see straight lines in buildings. Fun, yeah. But, but it could be in other contexts, and I don't know that it would necessarily, you could call it creative. Can you move it over? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Just keep reminding me. Okay. All right. I need your help. Okay. It's fun. What else? Different. What? Busy. Um, busy. It could be. It could be. It could be. All right. And it depends on the kind of curve, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. What else? Interesting. What if I move? In, how would I move in curved lines? Okay. All right. And so describe what I'm expressing. Fluidness. Fluid would be a good one, I think. What? Excuse me. What? Smooth. Smooth. It could be. Yep. Graceful, yes, I was trying to be graceful. Alright. And but if I'm doing the moonwalk, okay, I'm not doing curves or the robot, whatever you call no, the moon. I know something about whatever. You know, that crazy kind of dance and stuff. Where I'm making very more zigzag lines, more diagonal lines, communicating a whole different thing, right? Okay. So these are just a few examples, a few words, and again it's gonna depend on how you use it what you're going to communicate, but understand that different lines are going to give you very different feelings. Now, we made a lot more lines than these five lines, right? So, what, um, what you can do is vary these lines in many different ways. So, we're going to, and there's five basic ways that you can vary those lines. Okay, so five ways to vary um, uh, the five basic kinds of lines. All right, so let me show you an example. One you've probably seen before. Okay, starting at, oops, I gave you the answer right here. <laughs> Gonna hide it. All right, so, so what kind of lines are up here? Curving. Curving. Curved lines. All right, now how did the artist, this is um, Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, which many of you know, how did, the, how did they create those lines? Are they long lines or short lines? They, they, they come together, but how the artist created it was make a whole series of short lines. They, they give that feeling of a long line, but they're created with short lines. Okay? So that's one way we can vary is the length. And this will change the mood, but we're not going to write that in our notes today. Okay? So you can just make... Just make a little kind of example for yourself so you can think about that. Short lines and long lines are going to communicate differently. Okay. Um, what, oh, can I compare this with? Here's some lines here. Okay. And here's, and the lines here. How are they different? What? Okay, curve to, uh, I need a better. All right. Okay, here too, but how, what, how else would you describe these lines? Well, these are straight and these are curved, but how are they the same? They're solid, they're smooth is what I'm trying to get you to say and I understand why you're not saying it. So I'm still working on getting the perfect examples to, to elicit the perfect responses from you. But how are these lines different from these lines in the... They're choppy, okay, they're rough. And that's what we call texture. So you can vary them with different kinds of texture. So you can have a smooth line, 
you use a crayon, you get a rough line. If you use a marker, you get a smooth line. And that can give you a different feel. So go ahead and just make a, a smooth line and then just kind of make a choppy. By making what I'm doing is just a series of short lines. But a lot of times what the material you use, like if you use crayons, you automatically get a rough line. If you use Sharpies, you, you automatically get a smooth line. Okay, what other ways could we vary it? Direction? Yes. Direction. And if you study this painting carefully, you will see that they're going this way, they're going this way, they're going this way, this way, this way. So if they were all going the same way, you'd get a much different feel. Here, there's not a lot of variety in the direction. Okay, they're going one way or the other way. Here, they're going helter-skelter all over the place, okay? So direction. So just maybe make some random lines that are going in different directions. What else? It's in your book. Width. Width, thank you. I don't have an example for that. And there's a fine line pun not intended, but it works, <laughs> between a thick line and a shape, you know. At some point it becomes a rectangle, and so it's kind of how it's used. Um, so, um, the best example I probably have is in your book, which I don't have printed out, and sometimes these don't, it's harder to project to these, so you, oh, that's pretty good. This one I think all hope is lost. Um, Notice the, the trouble is the reflections I get. Notice the top one. Um, do you know what this is a picture of? Yeah, this is a picture of Christ. Okay, so, so the, the lines here are very thick. They're very rough. And then when you go down here and look at the still life um, painting, okay, the lines, which I can't see as well on the screen here because it, it's not clear, but they're very thin and, and delicate. So you, and part of it's the coloring is different too. So it's going to give a different mood. This is a kind of more peaceful, kind of more uh, feminine, playful. This is more serious, masculine, etc. So um, depending on the width, you get different kinds of, of feelings that you communicate. And the last one, degree of curve. Degree of curve. Yay, somebody's looking at in their book. <coughs> that way when I ask the questions, you guys just shout out the answers and Mrs. Mollick doesn't have to talk and talk and talk and talk. It turned off. Okay. Even the computer is saying, I don't want to get going. Okay, so we're almost done. Degree of curve. And the best example there is when we were talking up here about the meaning of curved lines, a lot of it, the curve will change. If I do this, I have a curved line. There's not much of a degree of curve. However, if I do this, there's a much stronger degree of curve. So it's going to communicate a different feeling. This is much more lively. This is much more peaceful and calm. Or if you do this, that's a party. Okay? So... These are your notes. Any questions about your notes? Now, for number five, what you're going to do is either find an example or you can make your own to kind of get an idea. It can be, this, this is an abstract composition. This is done by a very famous artist, Mondrian, and it's using mostly horizontal and vertical lines, right? So that's your first assignment. You can make your own. If you're going for creativity, which is those, that's up over and above, you're going to probably make your own. But if you don't have a lot of confidence in your drawing ability, if you can find an example, that's good as well. I found examples because I can't draw. Okay, that's not true. We can all draw. All right, seven, you label it composition using horizontal or vertical lines, which again, I can't spell vertical today, so it's C-A-L, make sure you have the right spelling. 
And then put some words down here that express the mood. This is static. Static means not moving. Formal, stable, serious. All right, so you're going to describe the feeling. Now, here is another example by a, a very famous artist, um, Keith Haring. And this is an example of, you see the diagonal lines? The only horizontal or vertical, there's, there's a horizon line there, kind of. And even that's kind of curved here. You see, it's not perfectly straight. And then there's some reference to, to um, vertical lines here. But most of it is zigzags, curved, etc. Very different feeling, right? And so that's a composition using curved, zigzag, and diagonal lines. Those tend to be the more lively. Um, Emotional lines, you get lively, loud, busy, active. All right, so that's what you do for number seven. Any questions? Excellent. You have been very good. You make it to work. Um, yes, you can put your books back right away, or you can wait until uh, later. This is varied by the end of the day, but you can always kind of, you should always ask. This is our pass. It doesn't get locked that way. You can always take a pass. Sign out and then.